El Dorado, Marco Polo and the Cintamani Stone. For Nathan Drake, the adventure never ends thanks to his brains and sheer willpower, aka his balls. Here we find Nate somewhere in London with Sully trying to make a deal with a pretentious douche named Talbot, who's looking to exchange counterfeit money for the ring that Nate always wears around his neck, which belongs to his ancestor, the infamous Sir Francis Drake. Talbot almost snakes his way into finalising the deal with his slithering accent before Nate and Sully call it off and hand-to-hand -hand combat ensues. Turns out Talbot's working for the devil, not literally. Her name is Marlowe, and her haircut screams, I'd like to speak to your manager! Cutter, the bald bloke that headbutted Nate moments earlier, ends up shooting him and Sully in the alley, and surely that is the demise of the characters we believe belong in the Injustice franchise. Flashback to 20 years prior when Nate was a wise-ass teenager pickpocketing and doing parkour in the streets of Columbia. It was here that he met Sully, who at the time was working for and banging a younger and equally bitchy Marlowe. Catherine! Who do you think you are, boy? Sully rescues Nate from Marlowe's henchman that looks like Agent 47 with hair, and the rest was history. Flash forward to present day with the side-by-side -side dead bodies of Nate and Sully, but it turns out that Cutter is actually their buddy, and the whole deal was a setup they planned. Oh, yeah. Bet you were gonna put a silencer on that thing. Sally, you got no sense of drama. Never underestimate the power of bulletproof vests and corn syrup. Rounding up the bunch is Chloe, and luckily we're not plagued with any exes trying to be civil moments between her and Nate, because he's with Elena now. Wait, where, where the fuck is Elena? Nate and his cronies end up tracking down T.E. Lawrence's old journal by following Marlowe. By the way, T.E. Lawrence was an archaeologist and writer who. oh, fuck it. Never mind. We'll save it for your parents who probably tried to get you to watch Lawrence of Arabia as their sad attempt to bond with you on the weekend. So the notebook contains details about Francis Drake's forgotten voyage to Arabia, and with that, Nate and his comrades make their way to France, Syria, Yemen, and of course, a bunch of crypts riddled with ancient corpses and really adorable flesh-eating spiders. Now that we think of it, Nate's really like a glorified grave robber. All the while, Marlowe and her suited man-slave Talbot are on Nate's tail, trying to get a hold of his ring. She wants to use it to help her find the lost city of Ubar, which Nate figures is what Francis Drake did a hundred years ago. Drake hid all the evidence of finding the city because, frankly, the world just wasn't ready for that much amazement. After almost being burnt alive, shot to death, and possibly overdosing on drugs that make you trip balls, as Chloe so adequately put it, the guy narrows down to just Nate and Sully. The duo eventually meet up with Elena, oh, there she is, and figure out the exact location of Ubar by once again creeping their way inside a dead person's resting place. You know, so something should seriously remain sacred. Just as they reach the surface, Nate is shot in the neck with a dart containing the same hallucinogenic drug that fried Cutter earlier in the game. While those guys kidnap Sully, and she gets her pale, bony hands on Francis Drake's ring. Right around the same time, she reveals that Nate isn't actually related to Drake. I suspect I know you better than anyone, Mr. Drake. Of course, that's not your real name, is it? Hmm. I wonder why they call this game Drake's Deception. Later on, with the help of the oh-so-immaculate Elena, Nate, or whatever his name really is, sneaks into Marlowe's cargo plane headed for the desert where Ubar is. Not even halfway through the trip, he's spotted by a big oaf who geniusly tries to kick him off the plane mid-air. That plan backfires, and as a result, Nate nearly bakes his brain in the desert. Nate meets a man named Salim, who gives this whole spiel about Ubar's mythology and something about a king and a curse. Surprise, surprise, Ubar is a cursed city. Reminds me of Las Vegas. Salim helps Nate rescue Sully from Marlowe's men in a chase that we could have sworn we saw in the Last Crusade. The men take it upon themselves to stop Marlowe before she reaches Ubar and gets her pale, bony hands on its tainted drug water. I must say, it's quite a surefire master plan in the vein of so many maniacal villains before her. Even though Nate has a peyote-like experience again and almost shoots Sully, he comes back to his senses and they stop Marlowe from getting what she wants. Reminder, don't ever point a gun at Sully, bitch. The whole city collapses and sinks into the sand, taking Marlowe and her effeminate henchmen with her. Sully convinces Nate to make amends with Elena and the trio head home. Wow. Whew, it was also exhausting just talking about it. I tell you, Nate should have been dead two games ago. Luckily, this is the last game until... Oh, Christ, there's another one. What up, guys? This is Knowledge from Gamers Little Playground, and I hope you enjoyed this vid. This is going to be an ongoing series and a collaborative series that we're going to be doing with Gaming Sins. Rewrote it, we edited it, and they're going to be voicing them. So any future episodes you can catch on their channel first, and then you'll see it on our channel a couple days later. So make sure to check them out, subscribe to them if you haven't already, and I hope you'll watch future episodes of the series. Peace.